What if I were to tell you that the fate of Middle-earth could have been altered by a single decision not to journey to Rivendell? Imagine a world where Boromir, son of Denethor, chose to remain in the white-walled city of Gondor, standing as its shield against the growing shadow in the east. Enter Boromir, brother of Faramir, a warrior whose bravery and skill in battle were unmatched. Known for his profound loyalty to Gondor, Boromir's leadership qualities and martial prowess were legendary. But what if Boromir had never left for Rivendell and ended up joining the Fellowship of the Ring? Could his leadership have altered the course of the battle and perhaps prevented the fall of Osciliath? Today, we delve deep into this what-if scenario. I'll examine Boromir's potential impact on the defence strategies of Osciliath, discuss some military dynamics at play, and speculate on how his presence could have shifted the tides of conflict. From the Council of Elrond to the banks of the Anduin, Boromir's journey was marked by courage and a heart torn between duty and destiny. So join me as we unravel how Boromir, the valiant son of Gondor, might have changed the fate of Osciliath had he remained where he was. In the heart of Minas Tirith, among the echoing calls of trumpets and clashing of swords, stood Boromir, the eldest son of Denethor II. Not just a leader by birth, but by sheer presence and action. Boromir's upbringing in the shadow of the White Tower instilled in him not only the law of warfare, but also the realities of command. From a young age, he was moulded to be more than a soldier, he was trained to be a leader of men. Known for his bravery and his strategic acumen, Boromir's leadership was characterised by an aggressive defensive strategy, often holding the front lines alongside his fellow men. This not only bolstered the morale of his troops, but also instilled a fierce loyalty that would be crucial in times of war. With Osciliath facing imminent threats from the forces of Mordor, Boromir's role as a potential commander in its defence could have been game-changing. His tactical knowledge and his ability to inspire men could have turned Osciliath into a stronghold, delaying its fall. Imagine this, Boromir at Osciliath, rallying the city's defenders. His command could have restructured the city's defences, focusing on its most vulnerable points to counter the overwhelming forces of Mordor. His presence could have meant a more coordinated defence, possibly holding back the enemy long enough for reinforcements to arrive from Minas Tirith, one or some of the fiefdoms of Gondor, or maybe even Rohan. Each command, each decision rippling through the ranks, strengthening the resolve of Gondor's soldiers against the Dark Tide. And as we ponder Boromir's potential impact on the battlefield of Osciliath, we see not just a warrior, but a beacon of hope, whose strategic prowess could have altered the course of the battle. His leadership style, marked by direct engagement and personal bravery, could have made all the difference in the face of overwhelming odds. Yes, they did already have Faramir here, but Faramir was known to be more of a scholar rather than a warrior. This is where Boromir comes into his oils. But can leadership alone turn the tide of war? As we delve deeper into the Siege of Osciliath, consider the weight of Boromir's shield not just in battle, but in the hearts of his men. Osciliath, the once glorious capital of Gondor, straddling the river Anduin. Its very position made it a linchpin in the defence of the kingdom against the encroaching darkness spilling from Mordor. This city was not just a symbol of Gondor's past glory, but a crucial tactical point. Its bridges and towers controlled the flow of troops and intelligence across the kingdom. The loss of Osciliath opened a direct path to the heart of Minas Tirith. When the forces of Mordor began their relentless assaults, Osciliath bore the brunt. Its defence was pivotal. Holding it was essential to safeguarding not just Minas Tirith, but the entire realm of Gondor from Sauron's wrath. Imagine the city's defenders, outnumbered and facing enemies bolstered by fear and dark magic. The psychological impact of fighting in the crumbling streets, constantly under threat, this cannot be overstated. In such 
dire circumstances. Leadership is more than strategy. It's the will to inspire hope amidst despair, to forge resilience from ruin, to pick yourself up when all seems lost. Boromir's presence could have been a beacon of that hope. With Boromir commanding the defences, strategies could have shifted. His knowledge of warfare and his inspirational leadership might have transformed passive defence into active resistance, utilising Oskiliath's unique geography to bottleneck Sauron's forces, causing significant delays or, hopefully, casualties. We must remember, in one of the previous battles in Oskiliath, Boromir, Faramir and only a couple of other Gondorian soldiers survived after they collapsed one of the bridges. The idea behind this strategy could work again. They could attempt to force the enemy into particular pathways, particular areas where they could take advantage, even in smaller numbers. Oskilius' fall was a devastating blow to Gondor, but with Boromir, the outcome could have been different. His leadership might have extended the city's resistance, altering the timeline of the war, giving Gondor precious time to fortify and strategize. So, we must ask, how could one man's leadership have changed the fate of this ancient city? Let us explore some hypothetical scenarios if Boromir was there. So envision Oskiliath, the front line in the defense of Gondor, now under the command of Boromir, Captain General of Gondor. What could have been different? Well, there could have been the reinforced defense. Boromir, known for his valour and tactical insights as I've said, opts to reinforce the city's weakest points, particularly the bridges believed to be the prime targets of the enemy. Under his command, Oskilius defenders implement a layered defence system. Boromir's strategy focuses on attrition warfare, aiming to weaken the enemy forces as they attempt to cross the Anduin. Or what about this one? Counter-offensive operations. Not content with merely defending. Boromir leads sorties against the encampments of Mordor's forces, disrupting their supply lines and demoralizing them with targeted strikes. His understanding of enemy tactics and his fearless leadership style allow Gondor's forces to execute precise attacks that sow chaos in the enemy's ranks, delaying their assault on the cities and really making them question what they're going up against. Or a different idea again, with strategic retreat and regrouping. Now, he may still realise the inevitability of Oskilius' fall due to sheer overwhelming enemy numbers. So, Boromir organises a controlled retreat, preserving the core of Gondor's army for the defence of Minas Tirith. Now, in this scenario, Boromir's leadership ensures that the troops' morale remains high despite that retreat. It's on his decision they make this action. It isn't forced upon them under attack, it is made with victory in mind. His actions saved thousands of lives and maintained the fighting spirit of Gondor's army, crucial for the battles that lay ahead. Now each of these scenarios reflects a different aspect of Barmir's capabilities as a leader and a tactician, whether it's holding the line, taking the fight to the enemy, or managing a strategic withdrawal. His impact could have significantly altered the course of the war, giving Gondor a better chance of withstanding Mordor's might. I would be curious to hear though, which of these scenarios do you think would have been the most effective under Boromir's command? But now let's consider this. What are the potential ripple effects of Boromir's leadership at Oskiliath on the larger canvas of the War of the Ring? How could his actions have influenced the subsequent phases of the conflict? You have to consider that Boromir was not only a warrior, but also a statesman. His presence and success at Oskiliath could have bolstered Gondor's appeals for aid, potentially accelerating the mobilisation of allies such as Rohan. Imagine Boromir urging Rohan to join the fight sooner, or even influencing the elves of Lothlorien and Rivendell to lend their direct support in the struggle against Sauron. Each alliance strengthened by his victories could have brought forward a united front against the Dark Forces. Although of course it must be said that the chance of a Gondor elven alliance was highly unlikely anyway, Boromir didn't really have any actual personal connections with the elves. And of course the elves didn't tend to get involved in any affairs of men unless they really, really had to. So although this was a potential, it is a very unlikely one, but still worth a mention. And we must also consider, with Oskiliath secured under Boromir's command, even temporarily, Gondor would have had a better staging ground for operations. It could have served as a critical buffer, buying time for Minas Tirith to fortify against the siege that was to come. We must also consider the psychological impact of Barmy's victories on the people of Gondor, and this cannot be understated. A successful defence led by the Captain General could have greatly uplifted the spirits of Gondor's citizens, reinforcing their resolve to resist. 
Ultimately, Boromir's strategies and leadership at Arskiliath might have delayed the siege of Minas Tirith, or even altered its course. With more time, better preparations, and heightened morale, the city could have withstood Sauron's forces longer, awaiting that pivotal aid from Rohan and perhaps enhancing that outcome of the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. While the loss of Osgiliath was a significant blow at the time, Boromir's presence there could have transformed it from a tale of defeat to one of heroic stand and strategic retreat, setting the stage for a stronger defence against the Shadow from the East. And that is something that we must consider. When the siege was set, the Nazgul were present. Their effect on morale was massive, so if they had someone like Boromir standing against them, this could have made a world of difference. As we piece together these threads, it becomes clear that Boromir's potential impact extends far beyond the immediate tactics of battle. His influence could have shifted the entire strategic landscape of the War of the Ring, offering a glimpse at an alternate history where Gondor's resilience is fortified by his hand. Thus, while the fate of Middle-earth was shaped by many heroes, Boromir's role at Osgiliath could have redefined the path to victory. So there we have it. As the sun rises over the White City, let us consider Boromir son of Denethor. Had he stood at Osgiliath, his story might not have just been one of valour, but also of pivotal influence on the fate of Middle-earth. Boromir's potential success at Osgiliath could have redefined him not merely as a tragic figure succumbing to the lure of the ring, but as a steadfast guardian whose tactical acumen and bravery directly contributed to the survival of his kingdom. In this alternate timeline, Boromir's name would be invoked not just as a lesson in the perils of temptation, but as a beacon of hope, resilience, and tactical genius. The lessons of Boromir's life extend beyond the battlefields. They remind us that leadership involves not just strategic decisions, but also the ability to inspire and uplift others during times of great adversity. Could Boromir's presence have altered the psychological landscape of the war? Might his leadership have imbued the people of Gondor with a stronger will to resist, thereby changing the narrative of despair into one of enduring defiance against the darkness? And what of Boromir's own journey? In our story, he does not fall to the temptation of the ring. Instead, he fulfills his duty to his people, perhaps realising that true power lies not in domination, but in the preservation of hope and dignity amidst despair. Boromir's legacy, as imagined in this tale of what might have been, challenges us to reflect on the nature of heroism in Tolkien's world, and in our own. It is a heroism characterised not by flawless virtue, but by the struggle against one's own limitations and the ultimate triumph of one's higher aspirations. And I would also like to take a moment at the end of this video today to give you a quick update on The Guard, the short film that we are creating. Everything is going amazing, we have just shot block 2, and the rest of it should hopefully be shot soon too. As always, it is all the money from our Patreon that is funding this. In essence, it is a no-budget production if you consider the large scale of film, but every pound that you give is a massive help to create an incredible story. I'm putting a couple of shots on screen now and some behind-the-scenes clips to kind of give you an idea of what's going on, so if you would like to help support it a little bit more to help push us over the line, then please check out our Patreon. Every little bit really helps. And with that now, it is time for my question of the day, which is, how do you think things would have panned out if Boromir had stayed in Gondol? How does it differ from what I've said today? Or do you think I've got it pretty much spot on? Let me know your thoughts and theories on this in the comment section down below. And now it is time to give a massive thank you to our patrons who continue to support the channel. You are all amazing. And if you have reached the very end of this video with me today and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It would massively help us out. And why not drop a like on the video as well? And with that, all I can say is, thank you for spending just some of your time with me today, and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.